So as we focus on the BEPS 15 action points, uh, clearly transfer pricing seems to be at the heart of a lot of it, and uh, in particular, the tension of the arm's length standard. Uh, so if we think about the arm's length standard, uh, how do you see the consistency of that continue to be applied versus what uh, the OECD says it wants to accomplish through the BEPS agenda? The arm's length standard is an interesting thing in Asia, and I, I include India in that remit because we're seeing a lot of unprincipled adjustments uh, that are not consistent with the internationally accepted arms length standard. We're seeing it uh, in relation to the historical um, position that the Indian Revenue has taken on matters, although we are very encouraged by the fact that they're moving to an APA program, and indeed I think they have over 140 applications for their first run. We're seeing it in parts of uh, Korea, we're seeing it in parts of Indonesia, and even the ATO in Australia, in relation to a recent release on market support payments, is taking a position that's completely contrary to the arms length standard. My concern is that the broader BEPS movement and the, the fact that BEPS is now in play is driving revenue authority behaviour, particularly around aggressive water positions, whereby they are very determined to ensure that they uh, have a position that yields ultimately revenue back to uh, the government in relation to this initiative and that's meaning they're being uh, less open to uh, logic around an acceptable arms length outcome. On the issue of the standard itself in relation to profits uh, versus TNMM, which is relevant for OECD territories in Asia, we are seeing them take, particularly on intangibles, a much deeper look at a, a variety of methods and, and not, not simply let the residual profit method flow through without serious scrutiny. Hmm. So perhaps more use of profit splits? No question. Yeah, that'll definitely come to play. It's an interesting question uh, to a European transfer pricing practitioner because, as, as you know, uh, there is that proposal out there on the European side on uh, CCCTB, which stands for Common Consolidated Corporate Tax Base. And uh, this would be a, a stepping away from the arm's length principle. And this is out there since a while. There have been now um, various discussions on that. But what you see is that uh, we stick to the arm's length principle. And, and basically, we should have something that works. And we all understand that, uh, practically spoke, speaking, um, it might not be very easy to apply it because pretending that if you were not um, dependent companies when dealing with intercompany pricing is sometimes very challenging. But I think we have the arm's length standard out there and before considering stepping over to something different, um, we should make uh, it very clear that maybe it's not perfect mm. and there might be some remediating things to take into account. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm pretty confident that it will survive. And we've seen to be have, uh, hearing that from a number of country uh, uh, policy people. Uh, we've seen to be hearing that uh, the arm's length principle, arm's length standard, should survive. Uh, on the other hand, there's that famous line in the uh, action plan that sometimes measures beyond the arm's length principle may be necessary. And I think it has to do with uh, uh, around abusive transactions or other, other areas that are uh, you know, going to cause concern because of the tension of transfer pricing.